Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Ninjago Legacy Coles Earth Driller 2019 edition. It's very much an update to or reimagining of the original Coles Earth Driller that I never got, never reviewed, but this one is definitely upgraded and comes with some pretty cool features. Of course you knew this would happen. Doesn't change it. Doesn't make it any less cool, at least certainly not to me. I just love that counter-rotating style. These pieces have been used in at least several themes so far, and it, uh, it just doesn't get old to me. This particular vehicle here, though, just does that thing exceptionally well, because they have rubber tires used at the front. They're actually not connected. So you could consider that to be a little bit of differential action, if if you will. This one is actually completely free. This is the, the drive one here, but it still works out just fine. And it rotates the engine, I guess, at the back here as this goes along. So that's cool. And you're also able to spin up the drill just by itself without having to move this thing. It just ticks all the boxes. Those are all the things that you want to have happen. You want to be able to go up to a wall and just sit there and, you know, pretend to be dr drilling through it like that. There you go. And you want this to, you know, actually move and have some action as you make it go. It's great. Uh, plastic wheels make a lot of noise, which actually totally makes sense for this. You know, in some cases it feels in some cases where they use these plastic wheels, it ends up feeling too toyish, too cheap. But here I think that loud sound is totally appropriate for this vehicle. It has two stud shooters, you know, one on either side. They just shoot forward, which is fine. I guess this is engine up here. Or does it have two engines? Is that how it works? You have one to power the drill and one power one to power the vehicle back here, like a turbine engine back there or something how does that work let me, let me know in the comments if, if you know the the canonical explanation for that in universe this is a pretty nice build here you know it's pretty well covered up you do see just a little bit where is it? a little bit of the blue just there the tiniest little bit not a big deal at all this is overall pretty nicely done with the sand green in there I got all the rocky textures going around the side. That's a print. No stickers used there. Thank you. Looks pretty good around the back. Got a couple of clips to hold on to minifig accessories. Yes, it's in a good place. It's out of the way. And it, you know, it's, it's a place to put accessories. Now, it's not actually going to hold as many accessories as, as are appropriate for the figures that you put in this. But at least there are a couple there. And... Hopefully you have one extra piece that you can add yourself to add in another little bit of accommodation. All of this comes up to get access to the interior. This does have some stickers used for the consoles on the sides. Those do look pretty good. You don't need to put those stickers in there if you hate stickers, but I think that they are appropriate. The uh, center one is just a, just a print, obviously. Yeah, it's pretty well done. Pretty well done overall. This is actually very, very colorful inside. All the Technic mechanisms, they've got a, yeah, you can see a bright green colored piece there behind the lime green. Uh, they've got a blue colored gear that I haven't seen before. Oh, right there. Yeah, there you can see it up towards the front. Yeah, interesting <laughs> colorfulness, but you know, fortunately you don't see most of that otherwise. There you can see how that wheel is completely free. And this one is, the driver and that's a that's a, a slipping clutch style uh, gear that's only intended to transmit across it however it is placed over a friction pin or friction is that considered a pin a pin connector thing so it, you know it's able to slip but it's also able to transmit at the same time so that's good and then you got your gearbox at the back allows you to spin this up and then these plastic wheels are not attached to the mechanisms at all. It's smart. It's good design. Another giant figure. Yes, Lego needs to continue making more and more and more of these. It's one of the better concepts I think that they've come up with for 
built figures, you know, large action figures. Because they're not trying to be realistic. They're trying to look like their own creations, their own minifigures. And it's such a good idea. This one, you know, has more things on it to articulate than most of them do because you have more arms. However, those arms are a bit limited by the use of these wedge plate pieces to give the torso some shape, some extra shape. You know, it's trying to look like you've got a second torso, second minifig torso down here. And that just limits how far you can bring this across. Can't bring it all the way forward, unfortunately, though it is on a Mixel's ball joint there. And it's the same story here. Can't really bring that all the way across. Can't really angle the, the sword all the way across, no matter what you do with it. It's too bad, but you know, you can slice. That's pretty good there. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. You can get down to a little minifigure level down here, you know? Yeah. Wish it was, I wish it was a little bit better. Wish he had a little bit more range. It's not, it's not terrible. Uh, you know, feet go forward and back, or legs go forward and back, as, as they should. You know, they shouldn't have any more articulation than that. You are able to get this into a walking pose. Has enough width on those to make that work. That's good. There's some reliance on stickers here. Of course, there needed to be. But the face is a print. It's partially hidden behind there right now. Now you can see more of it. You know, it's just based on the design from the minifigures, as it should be. I like the the build for the helmet here. You know, it's it's a proper build. You really do all of that. No no stickers used to simulate shape or anything. I like that. Yeah, that's that's very nice. If you ask me. Very cool. Around the back. It's got a little bit of shaping back here. It's not terrible, you know. Got some exposed, plenty of exposed anti-studs, but there's only so much you can do, you know, at a given scale. One thing that I don't like here is the use of the lime green down in there. Why did they put that lime green there? I wish that was just black or even a dark gray would have worked for me. And then you got the blue used down on the feet here. That's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, if I remember correctly, this had a pink brain inside as well when you're putting together the the head they they are doing that continuously like they started with the i think it was started with the brick heads using a, a pink two by two brick in there to represent a brain and it's just a cool little little thing that you only know about typically if if you build it and it makes sense then it gives you a little chuckle the included ninja are obviously cole and kai cole gets his appropriate golden weapon kai gets just two silver katanas and these outfits that are basically inspired by the, the original DX variations uh, look pretty good. Uh, the, the cowls are growing on me, especially in these colors. I think some of the other colors don't look as good to me, but they're growing on me. But I'm still not 100% behind their design. The prints, though, look very good. The prints especially that they put onto the torsos for these characters. The rest of the stuff going down into the hips and the legs is not bad, but the torsos especially are highlights for me. There are the two happier faces. Looks like the mouth isn't quite right for Cole there. Just a, just a little bit off around the, the bottom lip of it. And there are their less happy faces. The, the uh, battling or just angry, ready to battle faces. And then the two regular sized bad guys are the Stone Army Warrior on the left and the Stone Army Scout or Archer on the right with the working stud shooting crossbow. The prints are the same for these two, for all the body parts, except for the heads, which have the different faces. Got the green base on the left. I'll take the headgear off in just a second. Uh, yellow base on the right for the paint. There you can see the continuation of the same, same prints for the torsos. Obviously no alternate faces for these, though none are really necessary because they never really change their expressions very much. And there you go. Basically just a palette swap. All told, this is pretty nice, especially the Earth Driller itself, you know, which needs to be good for an entire set that is called Cole's Earth Driller itself to be to be good, you know, all, all told. Giant figure, good to get, even though it has some issues, I'm still happy to get it. And it's, it's not bad, it just feel like it, I feel like it could have been a little bit better. The figures, the regular minifigures, are very good in this. So 
all told, I feel like this is a success and in terms of its value, the price to part ratio is excellent. Truly excellent, especially when you consider the fact that this does have a, an extraordinary number of very large pieces for such a low price to part ratio. With that, especially with the print, you know, these are big pieces that in the print there as well, those typically bounce the price up significantly. Here that has not happened. Price to volume of stuff ratio I think is very good. What is bad about this set? Just tiny little things, little nitpicks, like the little color issue there. And, you know, a little lack of articulation there. But overall, this is this is a good value. Really glad that they put this on the market. And if you like this when you look at it, I think that you'll really like it in person. So, yeah. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in as soon as I can. Oh! By the way, uh, I did a build for this set. Uh, if you want to see that build video, you can check it out over on my build channel, of course. I'll link to that momentarily so you can get to it easily if you want. And at the end of that build process, these were the spare parts that I was left with. So a nice little selection there, especially with the weapons and these gold pieces. Good for putting together some custom stuff. And of course, they also have some extra studs for the stud shooters. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.